to the Workforce Connections podcast, where we discuss workforce development in Southern Nevada. Here's your host. Hi, and welcome to the WC podcast, where we explore workforce development issues in Southern Nevada. Today, we have a very special guest, a member of the Local Elected Officials Consortium, one of my eight bosses, commissioner from Esmeralda County, D. Windsor. D, welcome to the program. Thank you. So, uh, Commissioner Windsor, what have you enjoyed the most so far about your years as a member of the Workforce Connections Local Elected Officials Consortium? Well, mostly it's uh, nonpartisan, so it uh, has been able to get out there and help everybody, not just a few people. It uh, has done some some good in our area. We're uh, connected with the Nye County Coalition also. So uh, they have a coalition up there, and they have helped uh, quite a few people in our area. So that's what's really helped us to participate in this is that it has expanded to our, our area and helped us to uh, help other people in the area and you know make it, make it more accessible to people in our area. That's right. Uh, Esmer- Esmeralda, as I found out, because you invited me to come to your ranch, I even mm-hmm. rode a horse. Yeah. And uh, I learned that Esmeralda is very scarcely populated. And like you said, we have a community service provider from... Uh, Nye County serving Esmeralda, and that's yes. very unique. Tell us a little more about Esmeralda, because I got a, a really uh, glance at it. Tell us about the population, the ge- geography, and the industry in your county. Okay, yeah, the uh, the population is about 900 people, and it's spread out. It's it's uh, the smallest county, or one of the smaller counties in, in the, the state. Uh, the uh, Gold Point is where you come in as you're Coming up from Las Vegas, first place would be Gold Point. It's mostly uh, people that come there on the weekend uh, for camping and that. There's hardly any water there, so it's dry camp. There are a few people that live there. Uh, we're trying to get that incorporated and, and get it because it was belonged to BLM, so we bought it out finally, and uh, there's been a lot of uh, dissension over that, I should say, over the years. And then uh, we also have Goldfield, which is – the uh, county seat, and that's the biggest town that you come to in in uh, uh, Esmeralda. Uh, that's on the main highway, and they have quite a few little shops and that as you go through community there. It's a nice little community, a lot of har- historic buildings there, uh, and there is some old mines in that there that uh, people can go and look at and, and see. And then uh, we have Silver Peak, which is the lithium capital of the United States. We make more lithium there than any place else in the United States. Uh, and they are expanding quite a bit right now. Uh, so that, uh, and, but it's still a small community. We have about a hundred people in, in that community there. And then we have Fish Lake, which is a agricultural area, and it's spread out quite a ways over because it is agricultural. So it, it takes up quite an area. And then we have what's called Northern Tonopah. Um, uh, it's called Northern Tonopah, but it's right there as you're leaving Tonopah. And it's kind of a man camp, and, and uh, they have um, places there that you can park your RV in that while you're staying there. And it's, it's a real nice place. They take really good care of it. And they do have a little marijuana grow there that they're selling some uh, stuff out of the, a dispensary there. So, And that basically covers our, our communities. Yeah, it's a fascinating county. I really appreciate that you uh, invited me there, gave me a real close glimpse of what it's like to live there. And I remember Goldfield. I mean, as you said today, Silver Peak is the world capital of lithium, which is amazing. But I remember you telling me a story also that this is not the first time Esmeralda County has been the capital of the world of something. I remember you telling me about Goldfield and how at one time in our history, more gold came out of there than anywhere in the country. So it was like the richest town in the U.S. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. Uh, and, and as you study, uh, uh, there's lots of the uh, old gold communities throughout the state of Nevada. Some of them are uh, ghost towns now. Some of them still kind of exist, such as Searchlight. But we got the gold filled up there. We had Silver Peak. That's the same way with Tonopah. They were all built on uh, the gold rush. And uh you know, uh, Goldfield at that time, who had a lot of people at that time, I forget, somewhere around 50,000 people, uh, they were big on, uh, you know, they had a lot of mines and they pulled out a lot of ore at that time. So, but then it went away like most everything else. So it's still on the main highway. So it's still uh, stayed in existence because of that, you know, and 
a lot of the people that are there now, they work at some of the mines around, which are there again, if you're working at the mine or you're working out of test sites, you're usually traveling uh, anywhere from 50 to 150 miles a day to do your work. So a lot of times they could go there and stay for the week and then come back again. Yeah, it's a very colorful town because I obviously, besides being there with you and, and you showing me those historic buildings, I've driven when my I took my son to UNR for college uh, back and forth, I would drive by there. And it's uh, I mean, if you live in a city like us, you don't see things like that very no. often. So. So, Commissioner, uh, please tell us a little bit about, of course, we've had a worldwide pandemic and, it, yes. and it's hurt us all. But tell us about specifically how did COVID affect Esmeralda? I'm sure it wasn't the same as everybody else. Tell us how it no, affected you. Uh, we're more remote, so it, it makes a difference in, in how you interact with people. Uh, most people don't live like here. You know, you got neighbors all the way around you. There's very few places in, uh, in Esmeralda County where you have a neighbor that close. So it didn't really affect us to that extent to where you would uh, uh, have to worry about the neighbors or, you know, and all that. What it did affect was trying to get uh, services and that to the elderly and people that couldn't get out and go to the stores and that. So then we took our transportation and that and uh, people volunteered and, and we would go to the stores and bring them back food so that they didn't have to come out of their houses. Because uh, uh, like Goldfield, there's, it's about 25% older people. So it's a, you know older population. The biggest problem we had is, is because no matter how you have it set up, you have to go get groceries. So everybody went to, to either Tunnel Park or to Bishop, and that's where you meet everybody anyway. So you, know, you, you met up with everybody that you was trying to uh, avoid to an <laughs> extent. But you, know, you got a chance to catch up with everybody and see how things are going. Yeah. So it worked out pretty good. And obviously you've made it through like us. What do you see moving forward? People are calling it a new normal, but have has COVID left a, a lasting impact of things that are going to be different as Esmeralda, or is it going to be the same? I think uh, in our areas, in the more rural areas, it's basically going to stay the same. Uh, people don't look at it the same way because, like say, we don't have as big a population, and you don't have the people right there on top of you. So, you know, you don't uh, – you don't have that concern as much. You don't have all the stores and all that here. You know, uh, there's only a couple of restaurants in Esmeralda County. So, you know, uh, you usually like say you're going to Tonopah, one of the bigger areas, or Bishop, California, to do some of your shopping and that. So, and but that's what we was doing before. So it hasn't made that much difference now. When we come to Vegas or we go to Reno to do you know, shopping where you go into the bigger stores and it makes a little difference. And it's harder to remember all the all the protocols and that when you get here because we don't have as many of them there. That's right. I've saved my, um, my um, favorite question for last as we close the podcast. I wanted to, uh, obviously you know this, but we last year in 2020 uh, received national recognition. Mm -hmm. We won our Super Bowl, if you will, of local boards of 550 boards. We were the one that was recognized for best aligning workforce uh, in economic development in our region, which is connecting employers to a ready workforce. What would you like to see us do in the next couple of years since we've done that? What other things would you like us to have success in? Well, I think that the, the success that we're having uh, is due to the uh, the people that we have here running the, the show, you know. Uh, uh, it's made a big difference. I know that we was making a change when I first come in here because we were uh, kind of at the bottom of the list. And so it seems like we've climbed out of that, but by expanding and, and having uh, more access to it, we've been able to create a better workforce uh, community and able to reach more people. And, and that's what I like about it. And that's what I want to see in the future is, is being able to reach more people without them have to, to come all the way across town or, you know, go other places. I know where we're at is, is more difficult because we don't have as many areas or anything. Uh, it, it was nice to have the libraries, uh, involved in it. And I know that the libraries up there could be a little more involved, uh, talk to Nicole, you know, but you've helped us out quite a bit with the libraries itself. And I think that what I'd like to see is, is that we continue on this, this course where we stay number one, you know, uh, and in, in the innovations that uh, you guys have come forth with has really helped out and uh, put us, you know, not only 
put the, the workforce connections in the top, but it's also brought more people into it and excesses for more people. So that's that's the main point is to help people all the time. And you seem to be expanding that all the time. And we have expanded it to different entities all the time or different uh, areas, you know, uh, where more people can get involved in trying to help more people. Well, Commissioner Winster, you have our word that we are going to continue to support Esmeralda County mm -hmm. as we have. Uh, you have also our word that we are going to not stay complacent in the level of success that we've achieved. Yeah. As you know, in January 12, we have our strategic planning session and our theme is going to be rise up. So we're not mm -hmm. going to stay at this level. We want to rise up. Right. And uh, me personally, uh, I love having you as one of my bosses because you always... Uh, are clear in your communication. I know what you expect from me. Uh, I think on behalf of the staff, I'd like to thank you for your service. You drive three hours to come to our meetings mm -hmm. and you've been a great supporter of the staff. So I want to thank you for that and also thank you for being on our podcast today. Well, I thank you. So that's it for this episode of the WC Podcast. We hope to see you at the next one. Until then, stay safe. Okay, thank you, Dee, for staying for our bonus segment call Against the Wall. Our first section is called Your Favorites. Are you ready? Uh, I guess so. Okay, your favorite food? That's beef. Favorite movie? Uh, mostly it's westerns. Favorite city to visit? Favorite city to visit. That's a tough one. There ain't too many favorite cities to visit. How about your favorite subject in school? Uh, the, that would have to have been math. That's the only one I could pass. <laughs> okay. Your favorite song? My favorite song. Oh, man, that's a tough one. I haven't heard any of them in a long time. Uh, How about uh, your favorite holiday? Uh, favorite holiday? Oh, that would have to be in July there when you can get out and open. Enjoy the open outdoors. Yeah. Okay. Our second section is called Tough Choices. Are you ready? I'll give it a shot. Would you rather vacation in Nevada or in another state? Oh, uh, Nevada is fine. Uh, I usually go to uh, actually Arizona Strip, though, for my vacation in the summertime. Very nice. Are you a guy whose glass is half full or half empty? Depends on who's pouring it. <laughs> I like that. Do you like doing house chores or would you rather be horse riding? I'd rather be horse riding. <laughs> I, I know I know that for a fact. We've ridden horses together. Yeah. Would you rather owe money or owe a favor? Owe a favor. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Introvert. Here's my favorite question. Justice or grace? Justice or grace? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> it depends on the uh on on the uh circumstances. Okay. A lot of stuff. I'm going to take you to the, to the back to riding a horse. Would you rather ride a horse or drive your truck? Oh, I'd rather ride the horse. It's Yeah, he, he can see where he's going a lot easier than I can. That's right. Our final uh, segment is called Finish the Sentence. So I'm going to give you a series of unfinished sentences, and you will finish them for me. Are you ready? Yes. First one, if D could live anywhere, it would be? If I could live anywhere? Yes. Be right where I'm at. Esmeralda County. Very good. Dee's favorite thing about his professional career is? Oh, my professional career was uh, well drilling. And my favorite thing, of course, in well drilling, you do a little bit of everything. That's uh, the nice part about that type of a, of a job. Very good. The best part of living in Southern Nevada is? Uh, the best part of living in Southern Nevada was when there was no people here. <laughs> That's true. Three words that describe D are? Uh, the describe me, yes. uh, I have a tough one with that one. I'll give you one honesty. Okay. Yep. And, uh, I, I say also one of your biggest virtues is loyalty. Yes. Do you agree? Yes. <laughs> and finally you are dependable. Yeah. yeah. You're always here when we need you, Commissioner Windsor. So here's the last, uh, no, next to last one. If D could travel back in time, he would travel to... Oh, I wouldn't mind going back into the uh, older days. Uh, the the you know, like I say, I like a lot of westerns. So, 
I wouldn't mind getting back into the 1900s. Very good. That would be fun. Final question or final unfinished sentence. Doing the WC podcast today was? Was uh, kind of (laughs) nerve-wracking. Well, we appreciate that you were here. Thank you for staying over for the bonus segment. All right. Thank you.